Salamun alaikum. No, hello and welcome to ev uh, to episode twenty of hashtag L N T uh, with your man and your favorite host Ahmed Ali. Uh, now hashtag L N T. We try to um, to choose topics, a variety of topics, ranging from uh, cultural, social, religious, and of course scientific. Now tonight's topic is a scientific topic, a topic that you know we have an, a major effect on that matter. Uh, but uh, that's I, that, that's all I can say. So what you guys have to do is just continue watching to see what we're talking about today and how we're affecting the world. But let's go and see what's trending on the back very soon. So do stay tuned. Once again, we do welcome everyone for joining us tonight. Now, Guatemala's volcano one of the most violent eruptions over a century now. Um, the Fugo volcano killed 25 people, 25 people, and its lava and, and the steam went 25 miles out uh, from the capital city. Um, spewed rocks, uh, lava, uh, gas, and ashes into the sky uh, just yesterday, just or the day before yesterday uh, on Sunday. It even killed people staying at their homes. So people at home, um, they were affected by it and they died uh, as a result of it. And as you can see, the kids right there, they're terrified. Uh, people are trying to help them. Are, um, the, uh, everyone is being evacuated from the city uh, just in case anything does happen again. Um, and uh, the president of Guatemala uh, stated that it's a three-day mourning uh, for the country. Our uh, prayers do go for the ones uh, that are injured or that are um, lost their lives in that incident. Now, what are what else is trending? Jordan's pri prime minister has resigned after days of protest uh, for the taxes uh, and strike measures. This is crazy. Um, the guy resigned, um, and the protesters chanting anti-government slogans uh, slashed with the police. Um, but, you know, at the end, you can see that protests actually can result to something good. Um, I hope in Iraq, uh, if the electricity isn't, isn't that good anymore, we're going to go protest. Hashtag LNT is going to go protest. Uh, and we be sure uh, that the mayor of uh, Karbala gets resigned or someone who is responsible gets resigned. But anyways, let's go and check out tonight's topic because it's very interesting. Don't you guys feel like every summer the weather is just getting hotter and hotter? I mean, I can't even, and to tell you something for, for, for a fact, the afternoons here in Karbala, I'm not trying to talk somewhere else, the afternoon here is in Karbala, the heat is just deadly. You know, for me, when, when, when I leave to go home, um, I leave j during uh, midday, so to go home. Midday, the car is steaming. I hate myself when I get into the car because how hot it is. You know, I, ch I try to park it under shade or something, but when the sun reaches um, the middle of the sky, that's it. The car is heating up, um, and I don't have a black car, so, you know, it's, it's, it's crazy. But the topic of climate change and global warming has been discussed by scientists, including myself, uh, for decades now. Today is Environment, World Environment Day. So hashtag LNT is trying to celebrate that day and take it scientific with the fam. Tonight's question is very simple for you guys. Very simple. In three, two, one. Three, two, one. That's six seconds. All right. How are we responsible for global climate, global climate change? If yes, what are we doing and how should we stop it? The number to participate is plus 964-774-067-1836. You can give us a call via WhatsApp. You can send us a text message, a voice message. You can also go check us uh, live on Facebook. Uh, so you can go uh, and, and, and check it out uh, and comment, like, put that thumbs up, share. Uh, do all that good stuff because whoever participates in tonight's show, whether 
comments on Facebook or calls us or sends a message or voice message, their names will be written down on these sticky notes right here, placed in this blessed fishbowl right here to have a chance to win a free trip to Karbala along with many, many giveaways. So let's go take a very short break, come back to talk about more on climate, uh, global climate change. <laughs> Now, according to 2014 Pew Research Center, 40% of the U.S. public believe that, yes, we are responsible for global climate change. Human activity is responsible uh, for climate change. 35% believe that there's no solid evidence to this. And 18% believe that there's no such thing actually exists. This doesn't exist. Climate change is happening, whether you like it or not. And the Earth is getting warmer and warmer by the year. We'll get to talk about it. Because tens of thousands of scientists, including myself, from, coming from more than 100 nations, have accumulated researches and evidences and have concluded one thing, that humans are the main cause for global climate change. So what are the evidence that they've put forward? Number one, simple chemistry. When we burn carbon-based material, right there we're making or we're creating CO2, aka carbon dioxide. But we do have a call from Angela from the US. Salamun alaikum Angela, welcome to hashtag LNT. And tonight's question for you, how are we respons are we responsible for global for global climate change? Yes we are. Salam alaikum alaikum wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. Uh, yes, we are responsible for the climate change for paper products and plastic products. Mm -hmm. uh, we cut down too many of our uh, forests, natural trees, and everything and wasteful. The wastefulness of pretty much the U.S. We waste a lot of unnecessary items. Mm -hmm. Sorry, the, the, the voice. Yeah. Like if we would stop using paper products, mm -hmm. and, uh, like more electronic, using so much uh, plastic mm -hmm. necessary on things, and filling our landmines with mm -hmm. stuff that's bio, not biodegradable. Yes. Yes. So we wouldn't have any issues if we would stop doing these things and stop going over and messing with all of our natural resources. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Of course, I mean, of course, uh, if you think that's why, uh, or are we responsible? Yes, we are. In that matter, we are. Uh, but thank you very much, Angela, for joining us tonight from the United States. Um, I believe your name has been placed in this fishbowl. Um, so, inshallah, uh, thank you very much. And we'll do give the chance to others to also participate. Now, uh, we were just mentioning how uh, scientists are uh, providing evidences to how humans are the cause, are the main cause uh, for global climate change global climate change now the second evidence that they've provided is basic accounts uh, accounting what do we mean by that the more we burn of carbon dioxide the more the environment is influenced by that um, burning that we are doing now measuring co2 in the atmosphere and trapped in ice this is the experiment that they've done um, they found out that it's increasing and the levels are higher than anything we've seen in hundreds of thousands of years. This is crazy. The levels of carbon dioxide are increasing huge, huge. Now, the fourth evidence that they provide is that the chemical analysis of the atmospheric CO2 that reveals the increase is coming by burning fossil fuels. So. Thank you very much, whoever is burning fossil fuels, because uh, the more you burn fossil fuels, the more or the hotter Basra gets. So next year, we're uh, trying to see 70 degrees. But uh, we do have another call from Hussein from Iraq. Assalamu alaikum, Hussein. 
Uh, welcome to Hashtag Galantee. And tonight's question for you, are we responsible for global climate change? Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Um, this topic, oh, first and foremost, thank you so much for choosing uh, this topic and talk about it in your show. No problem, at your service. Uh, well, 100% we are responsible and there is no doubt in that. I would love to share with you something. Yeah. The global warming is led by an excessive consumption of all materials through large-scale industrialization. Mm -hmm. So, what is required is that a pressure on governments to adopt a tough anti-pollution regulations, and every single country must be able to meet the requirements of a climate change protection. Mm -hmm. But everyone is responsible, no yeah. doubt. Yes. Okay, and uh, let me take you through the game of numbers, we call it. Okay. Um, in in 2000, uh, sorry, in, in 2013, yeah. the global carbon dioxide emissions were 61 percent higher than they were in the 1990s. This was mentioned in a very renowned book called "This Changes Everything" for uh, for Naomi Klein. Wow. Uh, it's like a climate expert. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And a climate scientist, and, and and I would like to share with you a report by the American Association for the Advancement of Science. Yeah. Go ahead. The climate scientists agree that the climate change is happening here and now, based on well-established evidence. It is. And about 97% of the climate scientists have concluded that a human caused climate change is happening. Uh, this agreement is documented not just by a single study, but by converging stream mm -hmm. of evidence over the past two decades. Yeah. So there is no doubt in that. We mm -hmm. are responsible and we have to afford Dr. Price, mm -hmm. thank you so much. Thank you very much, Hussein from Iraq, for joining us tonight. I had one question, if you're still on the line. Okay, so he, he wanna, I just want to ask him, is, is Iraq helping uh, glim, uh, climate change or is it uh, you know, increasing pollution? We just want to find out. But anyways, also let us know in your country, if you're calling from a different country, let us know if your country is helping um, to reduce climate change or is it increasing uh, climate change. But, uh, change to this camera. No. Another scientific evidence that uh, scientists have brought forth or brought forward uh, that prove that humans are the reason behind. Uh, Hussein from Iraq also mentioned a few uh, points and few evidences how humans are responsible for global climate change. But another one is the basic physics that show us that CO2 absorbs heat. And it does because well, I'll, I'll leave you that for later on because we do have a few points left on. But number six, another um, evidence is that uh, modern climate conditions to find that recent warming of the earth is correlated to and follows rising CO2's emissions. Okay, so Hussein just, just texted and says uh, Iraq does increase uh, climate change. Hopefully we can, uh, you know, start recycling <laughs> so we can... Uh, get a better uh, environment in Iraq, but thank you very much, Hussein. Uh, another uh, point that um, all of them are, have, have concluded, you know, all the scientists, they base their evidences and, and they base their researches off of previous scientists and previous re researches. They continue from where others left off. All of them have come together and the points that we are going to mention as well and how we can avoid it they've came to the conclusion that through non-recycling, through other points and other matters, humans are increasing greenhouse gases, and which is very dangerous for the earth because the wasteable gases are not leaving the earth, they're staying within the earth, and that's very dangerous. That's why we see in Iraq and other cities, you know, j just a few days ago, I was talking to my friend in Canada, and they said that this is the first day in May that we got 35 degrees. In the UK, they got, I think, 48 or 47 degrees, which is crazy. Pakistan people died because of the heat. So we can see that the heat is increasing in every part of the world. No one's immune. No country is immune uh, of this, you know, climate disease, if you will, and this environmental disease that we're creating. The climate has nothing to do with it. We're creating uh, this disease. Now, we just received a text message from Sadiq from the UK. Sadiq says, 
Uh, yes, it begins with us leaving our phone chargers uh, plugged in even when unused. To not recycling plastic bags and bottles, we need to conserve our resources and move towards sustainable energy. Yes, very true. Thank you very much, Sadiq from the UK. Well said. Uh, your name has been placed in the fishbowl, uh, but thank you very much for participating in tonight's episode. Uh, we are receiving uh, new Facebook comments uh, from uh, viewers. Inshallah, we'll get to talk about them later on. But all of the points that we mentioned, what can we do? What is the best thing in this situation to do right now? We have, a f we have nine things for you guys to do that will reduce greenhouse gases and will make the environment better. Number one, change a light. You know, these old lights that you have at home, the cheap lights from Dollarama or from wherever, change them to eco-fluorescent lights because honestly, first of all, the light looks better. It brightens up the room. You're consuming less energy, which is in, in, in return, less carbon dioxide in the, in, in the air and it's, it's, it's better for your eyesight, it's better for, for your room when, when, you know, and it saves you money. The electricity bill is going to come less. So in all ways, you know, you're paying extra, like an extra dollar and a half or extra two dollars, but at the end of the month, that bill is going to be reduced a lot. Another one is drive less. Now someone if, if you don't understand why you should drive less and how that's not connected to global climate change, then honestly, I don't know where you're living because driving more, you're wasting more gas, which, you know, from the exhaust tips comes out carbon dioxide. And sometimes if your engine is blown up, it's carbon monoxide. Both of them are harmful for the environment and for humans, for us humans. Another point is recycle more. We got a few messages uh, and Angela from the States did say that. We need to recycle more. You know, in Iraq, I've seen this. Th there's no recycling bins. And even when I was in Canada, I saw people throwing bottles in the same garbage bin as where the rest of the things go. Separate between newspapers, between paper, water bottles, um, cans, whatever. Recycle bin is not a garbage bin and that's what we need to understand. Number four is check your tires. What do I mean by that? Honestly, when your tires are, are inflating or deflating, sorry, uh, they consume more gas because the car needs to push itself to the right speed. So when you do inflate your tires, do it regularly so you're not, and, and plus, it saves you money on gas, 3% or more per gallon, which is, which is really, really good for you uh, as a consumer of gas. Or you can just drive less, get a bike, and, you know, uh, exercise. You're exercising and you're saving the environment. Number five, use less hot water. Using less hot water in developed countries, meaning using less heat, using less electricity, using less fire. And in Iraq, you're using less electricity and the sakhan that you're using to boil up water is very bad for the environment. So reduce the usage of hot water. Number six, avoid products with a lot of packaging. See, th this one we, we really can't avoid. You know, this one we really can't avoid. This goes back to the company that makes the products. You know, for me, as a consumer, I want to get an, a, a good product that's sealed properly. I don't want to get my iPhone 7 or iPhone X, you know, in like a plastic bag or one box. No, no, no. I want it neat. So this goes back to how, you know, uh, initiative the company is when they're sending me the, the, the phone or when they're sending me um, headphones or whatever that I'm buying. So it just goes back to Amazon or Alibaba or AliExpress or whatever. But number seven, adjust your thermometer. This is very important as well. Two degrees, just make it two degrees less in the, in the winter and two degrees more in the summer. How will that help? It's going to save you 2,000 pounds of carbon dioxide a year. 2,000 pounds of carbon dioxide, which is crazy. 
That's a crazy number. Just two degrees. Two degrees, that's it. But let's go and ask the public before we continue off to the other two. Let's ask the public what they think about tonight's question. Are we responsible for climate change? Yes. Why? Uh, because we're using up the, the um, we're hitting up the system by the cars and the uh, lifestyle uh, is hitting up the, the the globe. Are we responsible for glo global climate change? Not really. No, you don't believe no. in global warming. No. Okay. Do you think we're responsible for global warming? And global climate. Change? In certain respects, yes. Why? Why? Well, because uh, there's things like litter, and rubbish, and, and uh, pollution. So yeah. Responsible for global gl global climate change? Yeah, absolutely. Why? Well, if you look at the damage we've done to the planet over the last uh, you know hundred years since the industrial revolution, uh, it's heating up massively. The Great Barrier Reef has finally died. We've wiped out millions, hundreds of millions of acres of rainforest. There's a finite amount of resources, and the population just keeps increasing. So, uh, yeah, we're doing some serious damage to the planet. Are we responsible for global climate change? Yes, everyone's responsible and every human being has a duty to um, watch how they are polluting the planet. So if you have the option to, to, to not pollute as much, um, to look after this world better, then yes, we are responsible. So from littering to um, uh, cars to sound pollution, that is, that's all our duty, of course. Welcome back, dear viewers, and thank you very much for those who joined us uh, from the UK. Uh, now, going back to the two points, and they mentioned a few points as well on how you can uh, reduce uh, the, the, the climate change. Now, another point which is very important for us, I started this with myself, uh, not to brag or anything, but I saw that nearing my near my house, the heat is crazy. Although, you know, people think this won't change a thing, it will. Because I went to every neighbor, I told them we have to plant trees from one end of the street to the end to the end of the street. And we actually did it. It's it's it looks first of all, it looks beautiful. You have trees in front of your house. And second of all, you're changing the climate because if you knew it already or if you didn't know it, trees or any plant gives you oxygen and feeds off of the carbon dioxide. Now, not saying that, you know what, burn more so the trees can feed. No, 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 no. The trees, is, it's harmful for the trees as well. But it takes in the garbage and it gives us oxygen. So how beautiful trees are. So go and plant a tree, a simple tree. In Iraq, it's 500, which is like 40 cents. Just go plant a tree. It's, it's simple. If you're living in Iraq, plant a tree. If you're living in the States, I remember when we planted trees in our, in our backyard, it was like, think a dollar and a half for a tree, like a small tree. Plant that. Water it, it'll grow. Grass, flowers, whatever. Just plant. Plant anything. The ninth point, and the last point for tonight, is turn off your, electri your electric devices. And this is very important as well. A lot of people don't notice this. When you consume more energy, your the company the company is burning more gases it's it's burning more fossil fuel it's it's creating more carbon dioxide then it's going to harm the environment so when you turn off your tv when you don't need it when you're going to sleep you know turn off the charger if you need your phone okay keep it on but if you're if you're going home if you're going to sleep turn off the charger turn off the lights if you can't sleep when you're uh, you know, in, in, in a dark area, buy like those rechargeable lights, turn them on and charge them during the day. So it's, it's not hard. All you have to do is take care of the environment like you take care of yourself because the environment is taking care of you by giving you oxygen. So if you want to live in more heat, just keep on consuming electricity and consuming gas and all that stuff so you can burn carbon dioxide. But let's read out the comments that we received on Facebook. So we can continue uh, with a special video that we have for you guys today. Uh, now, uh, Ambreen Azgar uh, says we can't plant, or she, I think she means we can plant trees to control global warming, okay? 
Um, Ayman Zahra says, yes, we are responsible for it. Climate change uh, is happening because of, of over pollution, defrostation, and industrialization. Okay? Thank, the, these two have already participated. Thank you very much. Your names are already in the bowl. Um, Mariam Dawn Fleming. Uh, she says, we are responsible too much tree cutting and not repl uh, replanting, etc. We need to get back to using less, control our carbon uh, footprint. Side notes, okay, it's only four degrees where I live in Canada right now. Crazy. Oh, wow. So, the, the, okay. Wow, okay. So, it's, it's good. Now, uh, Miriam Dawn Fleming, let's just write her name down. AP20, all right. Thank you very much, uh, Miriam from Canada, for joining us tonight. Your name is going into the bowl. Once again, we do thank you. Now, let's go and check out this very nice video uh, that we got for you guys today about, and it summarizes everything that we've said. So let's go and check it out. This is Earth, the planet in our solar system that we live on. However, our planet is not on a good path for continuing to sustain life. The Earth is facing the accelerating detrimental effect of climate change, also referred to as global warming. Well, what exactly is climate change? Climate change is defined as a long-term change in the Earth's overall temperature with massive and permanent ramifications. Climate scientists believe that this isn't caused naturally by the Earth, but by human activity. Earth's atmosphere consists of gases such as oxygen and nitrogen, and other gases known as greenhouse gases like carbon dioxide, nitrous oxide, and methane. Incoming light from the sun hits the Earth's surface. The Earth absorbs some of that energy, heating the surface of the planet. The rest of that energy gets reflected. Some of that energy goes back out into space, but greenhouse gases like carbon dioxide trap the energy and send it right back to the Earth's surface, heating it up even more. This is known as the greenhouse effect. Now, a little greenhouse effect is natural to the Earth and is a good thing to have, but a large greenhouse effect can be catastrophic, causing a lot of that energy to stay in our atmosphere and heat up the Earth at an accelerating rate. Some of the main human activity that emits greenhouse gases are fossil fuel burning, animals, agriculture, and deforestation, and waste and recycle pollution. But how do we know that our human activity is the cause of accelerated climate change and not the Earth's natural process? Our civilizations produced a devastating 40 billion tons of carbon dioxide last year, which equals 700 trillion cubic feet of CO2. That's a little more than 100 Mount Everests of CO2. It's enough CO2 to fill the entire Grand Canyon five times or it's the equivalent of 19 million empire state buildings. The largest natural pollutant of the Earth are volcanoes. If we take the largest scientific estimate of carbon emissions produced by volcanoes every year, that's 500 million tons of volcanic CO2. But that's not even 2% of the nearly 40 billion tons of CO2 that our civilizations produced. Over the course of thousands of years, our climate goes through a natural climate cycle of carbon dioxide being absorbed and released into the atmosphere. But once the Industrial Revolution kicked in, burning fossil fuels became the necessity of manufacture and production plants, and the CO2 level shot up violently and have not slowed down since. The Earth has not seen this much carbon dioxide in its atmosphere for millions of years. Our planet with the greenhouse effect is like a bathtub being filled with more water than it can drain. Eventually, it will fill up with more than it can handle. But why should we care about global warming and climate increasing? The Earth's temperature has risen 1.5 degrees Fahrenheit over the past century and is projected to rise another 0.5 to 8.6 degrees Fahrenheit over the next 100 years. Animals and plant life are struggling to adapt to these conditions for survival. If even one species goes extinct, it can create a domino effect with the food chain. No living plants or animals means no living humans. The question is, how do we stop this? Instead of burning fossil fuels, we need to convert to renewable energy, such as solar and wind power, which emit zero carbon emissions when operating. Energy from the sun and the wind are infinite. Unlike fossil fuels, we will never run out of them. 
more solar energy falls on the earth in one hour than all the energy that our civilizations consume in one year. Civil engineers from the Solutions Project calculated that we could power most of the world with only renewable energy if we just actually decided to do it. Remember, climate change is very real and is drastically affecting planet Earth. Once again, I'll end a very informative video, uh, but we did have to cut the video short because we're running out of time, but big shout out to uh, a few uh, names that have uh, constantly joined us in, in the show. Uh, now, uh, Alia uh, Rasumi from uh, Australia, Fazimud from Trinidad, uh, Angel Angela from the US, Hussein from Iraq, Ismat Mahdi from India, Sadiq from the UK, Maryam Rana from Pakistan, Fatima Vakil from India, Farhad Azizi from Canada, Zakia Anrazia from Norway, Zainab from Pakistan, Muhammad M from India, Batul from the US. We did promise you a shout out, so there's your shout out. And lastly, we do thank everyone for joining us tonight. Beautiful night here in Karbala, yet sorrowful. So at the end, we do send our condolences to everyone on these very sorrowful nights, uh, which we mark uh, the martyrdom of Imam Ali. So in the name of Imam Ali, go do something positive for the environment because environment needs us and we need it more. Um, so do go, go out and do something positive. Thank you very much. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you.